Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have a Pokemon repaint. And if you guys saw my Clefairy repaint video, then you know what's coming. During my Clefairy video, I mentioned that I wanted to do a Gengar doll repaint. And the reason for that is because there's this really interesting Pokemon theory where Gengar is the ghost of Clefable. And I think that's so interesting. So I wanted to make a Gengar doll. I did this video in collaboration with three other doll artists here on YouTube. Those artists are The Switch World, H Alley Crafts, and Sky the Golden. I will link all their channels down below as well as their videos so that you can see the lovely Pokemon dolls that they came up with. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to watch some doll videos because I am so bored during this pandemic. Like, I can only be so productive, okay? <laughs> Initially for this doll, I wanted to use Kitty Cheshire as a base, but then it occurred to me that Kitty Cheshire is like really <laughs> short <laughs> compared to my Clefairy doll. And I want this doll to be a companion to Clefairy, so I want them to look kind of similar and be the same height. Um, so I chose to use a Jane Boo Little Body and a Claudia Wolf Head. It really bums me out to take these dolls apart because I only have one of each of them in my collection and I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. Maybe I'll put Jane's head on Claudia's body and just like figure it out. But anyway, um, I'm taking their heads off with a blow dryer. I tie her hair back and cut it all off. I actually ended up keeping her hair because it was in pretty good shape. I dunked her head in hot water for a little bit just to make sure that the glue plugs were easy to get out through the neck hole once I scraped around her head with my screwdriver. Once I loosened up all the hair plugs, I went in through her neck hole with needle nose pliers and got all the hair out. And this is all my glue chunk goodness. With acetone nail polish remover, we are wiping off all the factory paint. Something that bums me out about Monster High is they didn't do more of these smiling face mold dolls. I think she's just so unique and interesting. She's literally the only character they did a smiling face mold with and it makes for such a cute doll. And I just wish they did more, like why not? I decided to sculpt Gengar's ears right on top of Claudia's ears, so I took my epoxy sculpt and I mixed it together. It's a two-part mixture and you just kind of like mush it around for a while. You got to make sure it's like nice and mushed together. Uh, just saying, that's that's my epoxy tip. That's like literally the only one I have because I'm really bad at epoxy, but um, I'm just taking it and I'm mushing it around her ears so it's like these two little kind of triangle shapes. Once the ears were all nice and dry, I sanded them down and painted them purple. I gave Gengar black hair because if you look at a lot of Gengar art, there's like, it's mean, I mean, the Pokemon's mostly purple, but in some shots, there's a lot of black shading. So I decided to go with black and purple for my colors. For the hair, I'm using yarn that I uh, brushed out, straightened, put in fabric softener for 10 minutes, and then straightened again. And I'm just taking my Riru tool and plunging that into the head. To make sure all that hard work stays in place, I take some Fabri-Tac glue, squeeze it into her neck hole, and just kind of like mush it around violently um, until I feel like everything's coated. So obviously I had to change the color of Claudia's face. I chose to spray paint it. Um, I did this because I knew that with pastels, you can't go lighter, you have to go darker with them if you want to use that color changing method. And I also didn't want to hand paint it because um, it's just really easy to make that look bad. So I didn't want it to look bad, so I spray painted it. This spray paint actually dries semi-glossy, which is a no-no. So I had to uh, spray paint it and then apply matte varnish to it and then spray it with MSC to make it so that it was like a drawable surface. I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear and then it's on to the face up. So I start with the eyes. I start sketching them out and I actually followed Claudia's eye mold pretty exactly because it's sort of perfect for Gengar's eye shape.
As per usual, I do my sort of extreme blushing on this doll because I like to do it. So <laughs> we're doing it for this one too. I thought about making the whites of Gengar's eyes red, but uh, I decided against it because I just thought it would look probably kind of bad. So um, I went in with white instead, like usual. The general sort of aesthetic that I'm going for with this doll is cute, but sort of creepy and gothy. <laughs> so that's what we're working with. Um, I chose to give her black lips because I thought it would go well with her complexion and also to sort of suit the gothy aesthetic that she has. For the pastels on the lips, I chose to use black, but I also threw some red on top of it. Just cause like, honestly, I think I was throwing it back to when I was going through my gothy stage in middle school and I would wear black lipstick with red in the middle, so. <laughs> I add tones of blue and white around the face and I know it looks kind of extreme right now, but I swear once I spray it with MSC, it dulls down quite a bit. Making branch-like pencil marks, I add veins around her eyes and her forehead. I took a deep purple paint and I splattered her face. I did this because I like adding freckles to dolls, but also specifically for this doll, I wanted her to have skin texture, again, to lend to her sort of creepy cute thing that she has going on.
For gradients in the eyes, I normally go in with pencil at first and then um, pastels and a Q-tip and I just like pack down the pastels. This just helps me get a gradient that I can, I don't know, when I build it up with colored pencils, I feel like it just takes more time and I am an impatient person. So this is how I like to do gradients in the eyes. With Macro Pearl X Powder and Interference Violet, I add that just all over her face because I'm gonna be honest, shimmer makes like all dolls just look better. Like, <laughs> just try it if you haven't. All right, let's talk about eyebrows. So initially I was gonna give this doll some like angry eyebrows, but I was like, mm, why not give her some super bushy eyebrows? Cause I've just been really digging super bushy eyebrows um, on dolls, on people, on everyone. I just, I like me some thick brows. So I gave her some super thick brows and I was really happy to do it. Cause I don't think I've ever gone like super thick with eyebrows on a doll. Honestly, I could have gone thicker, but we were treading on some like Frida Kahlo vibes and that wasn't really the vibe I was trying to go through. I just want to have some like nice groomed thick eyebrows. So at this point I'm going in with paint and that means that I'm kind of like almost done. I'm just adding paint like around the eyes for highlights and also the eyelashes and the eyebrows. So I'm mainly adding like highlights and stuff around the eyes. I mean, let's be real. The eyes are like pretty much the most important part of a doll. For the teeth, I didn't want to go in and like individualize each tooth. Um, I've seen some people do that and sometimes it looks good but a lot of the time it looks like, <laughs> it kinda looks like little chiclet teeth. Um, and I didn't really want that effect, so I just gave her one big honking thing of teeth. With most dolls, I go in and I add a metallic paint on top of the pupil, and honestly, this doll is no different. I went in with red metallic paint, and I just did like a little circle of that on top of the pupil. I added a ring of pink paint around her eye to act as a highlight. In retrospect, <laughs> I feel like I said this a lot during videos, I probably should have done this with orange because it just would have matched with Gengar's character a little bit better. Um, so whoopsie daisies. This is just a very feminine Gengar, all right, with very like well manicured thick eyebrows and pink highlights in her eyes. One of my biggest tips for the eye shines is to go in with pencil first and kind of sketch them out and then go in with watercolor. Um, so... I mean, obviously, if you're doing like a dot, I guess that's not necessary. Some people just do like dots for eye signs and you don't really need to sketch that out. Um, but if you're doing them a little bit more intense, um, sketch it out with pencil first and then go in with watercolor and go on top of it. Also, I recommend using watercolor instead of acrylic paint. I recommend that because with acrylic paint, it's just harder to get off if you mess up. 
I mess up sometimes <laughs> and it really bums me out when I mess up. Acrylic paint is just way less forgiving on such a tiny scale. Um, if you're, you know, painting like a normal painting, acrylic paint's actually great. Like it's not, it's very forgiving. You can cover up like anything with it, but on such a tiny scale, it gets thick really easily. It dries so fast. So you're kind of like, it's like permanent really fast, you know? And I just think watercolor is way more superior in this medium. But anyway, I apply Vallejo gloss varnish to the lips. Now onto clothes. So for her dress, I modified a fairy good fairy pattern that I have and just basically made it pointier. For this dress, I was basically going with pointy and poofy. That was her RuPaul's Drag Race runway look. <laughs> Speaking of RuPaul's Drag Race, by the way, um, the season is crazy, <laughs> just saying. Now onto sewing, my favorite part, just kidding, not really. Actually, I don't hate sewing. I'm just bad at it because I don't have the patience to watch instructional videos on YouTube. <laughs> just saying. Um, I just, they're really boring. They're like super, super boring. Um, but I hem the uh, front of the neckline, the front part, and then I go onto the back and I hem the back neckline and where the clasps are going to be. For the back skirt portion of the dress, I sew these like little petal shapes that I cut out at the top. I sewed the front and back top of the dress together at the shoulders. For the sleeves, I gather stitched a tiny piece of tulle and then I sewed that to the bottom of the sleeves. I then sewed the sleeves to the top of the dress. For the front and the back, I sewed the bottom and the top together. I then sewed it up the sides and we're almost done with sewing, yes! This is how the dress looks at the moment. Honestly, I'm kind of digging it without an underskirt, but like it kind of needs an underskirt, so we need to sew one together. For the underskirt, I sew these two panels of black fabric together at the sides. I gather stitch the top of the underskirt. This fabric is spandex, which is pretty easy to gather stitch. So that was kind of cool because um, I'm really bad at gather stitching, so. For the ruffles on the underskirt, I gather stitched three really long pieces of purple tulle. Here's the finished underskirt. Hooray! It's very poofy. I kind of dig it. Um, we're actually going to take some purple ribbon and I'm going to add that to the trim of the black of the underskirt. So I'm just attaching that with Fabri-Tac glue.
The very last thing to do for this underskirt is to sew it up the side and then I sew it to the dress. The last thing to do with this dress is spruce it up a little bit. So I took this purple bow and I took a bit of black lace and a black gem and I glued that to the front of the top of the dress. Um, I did this to mimic Clefairy's design. She kind of has the same thing going on. With some purple ribbon and a black gem, I made this doll a choker. This is another aspect that I wanted to imitate um, from Clefairy's design. For the shoes, I found these spiky kind of platform heels in my accessory stock box, which is a thing. I have an accessory stock box, but I painted them a smoky metallic purple. For the body, I used a lot of the same tones that I used on the face. So pinks, purples. I also gave her a black gradient on her hands because I thought it would lend to her like ghostly, creepy, cute quality. Here she is with her head back on, which putting the heads back on dolls is kind of one of the most satisfying things to do, if I'm being honest. Like, I just really like seeing how they come together. Um, and for her hair, I was thinking about just keeping it kind of scraggly, but yarn gets like really thin at the end, so I just gave it a whack. With hot glue, I took some bows and I just hot glued them to her ears. This again is something that I did to imitate what Clefairy has going on because I want them to look similar yet different. And with that, she's finished. Woo, I'm excited. She's kind of different than my other doll. She's just like very dark. I dig it. And actually the next doll that I have for you guys is also quite dark. Maybe I flipped over a new leaf, like a gothy, dark aesthetic. Nah, not really, but <laughs> like, I don't know. It's cool to switch it up a little bit. Um, again, all of the people in this collab are linked down below. Go check them out. Go check out their videos. I hope you guys are staying safe during this crazy time. Um, stay inside. Watch YouTube videos. I don't know. Do something. Take up a hobby. Start doll repainting. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe. It makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye.